activist question. I have a problem with righteousness. I hold people accountable for their negative behavior. For example, if they are inconsistent, rude or unkind, I'm not shy about telling them that I think that sort of behavior is not okay with me. I know maybe this is controlling thing or an arrogant thing on my part but it is hard to let go because I think it is still important to call people out on things that are harmful, particularly social justice issues like human rights. I want to be an activist but I find myself getting so angry and speaking from that place. I feel like in those moments of anger that I've lost myself and yet I keep going because the courses I believe in are so important. I battle with this daily. Do you know what I mean? Can you suggest anything? When you're yelling, it's because you don't think you're being heard. So you escalate and you escalate. But come st kind of step back from that and ask, what actually makes people hear you? How likely are you to listen when someone's yelling at you? You just kind of shut down, right? You shut down or you fight back, but you're not listening. Yeah. So if the goal of the yelling or the goal of the um, righteousness or aggressiveness is they need to hear me because this is important. Take a step back from them and ask what actually connects heart to heart. And so building a relationship makes you hear each other. Like say you're very concerned about the climate or you're very concerned about racism or something like this. These are very important things, but if you want people to hear you, they have to feel loved. Because think of how it is for you. When you hear something, what makes you hear something? Response. I find it really difficult to love people that are actively doing harm. I'm not talking about everyday rudeness, but really important things like the issues you mentioned. I just have trouble finding compassion for people who are so self-centered and close-minded. Yeah, because, why? Because you don't have compassion when you don't understand, right? Response. I do understand. It is how they were brought up, or what happened to them in their life, or the type of information they have exposed themselves to. I understand. I just don't agree or have compassion for them. But still, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. <laughs> they should know better. <laughs> right? Response. When faced with information that is new, then they should know better. Yes. You have to make it personal, I think, and ask, okay, divorced from the issues, just what are the strategies that make me listen and change? Like I was thinking about... I know that sugar is not good for me, <laughs> okay? And I have a lot of like aches and pains in my joints and I know that sugar makes it worse. It, you know, inflammation, et cetera, et cetera. Family history of diabetes, as I mentioned. It's not good for me. I know it's not good for me. And recently I watched some documentary about how it's really not good for me. I still eat cookies, right? Like, so I know better but it's taking a long time to change a habit. And so when I catch myself, I change, but I have to catch myself because it's new, you know, because I've been letting myself off the hook my whole life for eating too much sugar. And so to eat less sugar, I really have to be mindful. You know, I'm not too bad about my anger, <laughs> but my sugar is just, it's a whole new skill, right? So, you know, so I can, I, I'm just gently, gently like, all right, it's not good for you less. That's a process that's happening internally within me. 
if someone around me said, you shouldn't eat sugar, it's going to make you sick. You're a stupid person for eating it. Hmm. Is that going to make me more likely to remember? It's just going to make me defensive. And I might even like binge because I'm like, (laughs) you know, right? Who knows? Right. You know, the thing that's going to help me is if my friends and family go, I know you're trying to work on your sugar thing. Here's something delicious that's not sugar. You know, you know, something it's kind, it's kind. And it's seeing the humanity of trying to change a habit. The thing with people who have a lot of prejudice is that part of them knows that they're wrong. Ah, And they're very defensive about it because how long have they had that belief? All of those years they've been wrong and their identity is all wrapped up in it. So you're asking them to take a piece of their identity and say, this whole set of beliefs, my whole life has been incorrect. I have been wrong that long. Not many people's pride can handle that, especially if they don't have a spiritual path that lets you have objectivity with your own afflictions. So you have to make it feel safe for them to say, I was wrong. If they don't feel safe, they're never going to say that. They're going to cling even more tightly because you're attacking them, right? So it's a bit like, you know, with the Me Too movement and all of these guys being confronted with their sexual harassment. If they would just say, yes, I did it and I'm really sorry and I'm not going to do it anymore, we'd say, it's human. It was horrible. Don't do it again. We're watching you, but okay. Right? But so many of them said, no, 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 I didn't do it. No, 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 I didn't do it. Because it wasn't safe for them to admit that they were wrong. If they admitted they were wrong, they would lose everything. So what we need to do is to try and make it safe for people to change their mind. And, you know, you don't have to call it love and you don't ever have to love their afflictions. You don't love their afflictions. You don't love their, their prejudice. You don't love their incorrect views. But you love that there's a person in there who is suffering, whose identity feels all fragile and brittle and needs defenses. Wow. And you just kind of heart to heart, I get what it is to change a habit. You know, and you're just kind of beaming acceptance while holding steady to your correct view. Response. That makes sense. And in, you know, anytime I've ever changed a bad habit that I didn't understand how bad it was, it was because a friend told me with incredible compassion, what you're doing is harmful. But I could oh. not have heard it from someone who was mean to me. I would have just shut down. But because it came from this friend who loved me, who knows the reasons how I got that way, I was able to hear it and go, oh, yeah, I do do that. I'm so sorry. Okay, yep, I'm definitely working on that. You know? You know, now you're able to separate the person from the behavior. And you go, that behavior is unacceptable and needs to change. You are a human being deserving of love. You know, and you're able to make that separation. So if you remember that everyone has a backstory, everyone has a story that made them who they are. And if we understood it, we would have compassion. We wouldn't have to force it. Mm-mm-mm. You just naturally would be like, oh, that's why. <sighs> of course. You know? Yeah. It's, um, it works for everyone. It's just the problem is we don't know people's backstory. And so what we usually say when we don't have compassion is, I just don't understand why they, I just don't understand why they can't. I just don't understand why they, that's showing us the entry into compassion. You know, if we understood, then there'd be some shared humanity and we would understood if we have clairvoyance, if we were a Buddha, but we're not. So we have to just make the leap that says, no doubt they make sense given their context. Taken out of context, I must seem very strange. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I know it's hard. And that righteousness, you already have captured the fact that it's not ideal and it's not helping. And you've already captured the fact that your ideals are important and valuable. You already know most of it, right? So you're, you're going on the right track. It's just a matter of kind of catching yourself and asking, what do I actually want here? Do I want to be right? Do I want to win? Or do I want to help change hearts and minds? Because if I'm wanting to be right and wanting to be win, then I've set up a competition that wasn't even there before. I've set up a war. 
you know, if I want to change hearts and minds, then I'm reaching and developing relationship and it's harder and it takes longer, but it's more sustainable. Right. So the cycle of violence, right. Always cycles round. So it, it's like, if you win, you still are going to lose because it's going to come back around and bite you. But if you change hearts and minds, it's longer, but it actually becomes stable. You know, so it's harder. It's much more satisfying to just win an argument. So much more satisfying. I won. I showed you how you were stupid. Ha ha. You know, and then they feel subdued and they feel like, oh, hmm. And then what, who are they going to take that out on? You know, are they going to beat their wife when they get home? Are they going to kick the dog? Are they going to, you know, tell off some guy at the bar? Like what's going to happen next? You know, you've just kind of moved the violence energy. You know, you haven't stopped the violent energy. Just gently sit, sit with what do I want to accomplish? What will actually help that happen? There, there's a time and a place to be noisy and to say, this is wrong, but it has to be from a place of inner calm. Yeah. When you're inner calm, then you can be very forceful and what we call wrathful and say, this is wrong, you need to hear this. But you're choosing to do that from a place of stability and peace rather than reactivity and um, agitation and wish to harm. So, um, you know, then you can use all of your skills. If you're calm, all of your tools and all of your skills are available to you. If you're agitated, only the most animal ones are available, which sometimes work, but usually in a limited way. But we're with you. <laughs> Concluding thoughts. Patience while waiting for people to agree with the positive changes you want to make doesn't mean you're complacent. It means your mind is steady enough to see where your current radius of influence is and to work within that space.